one of the major work activities on the lake during the, those winters was making sure that there wasn't too much snow load on the roofs. This meant shoveling and plowing it off. And this is my brother cleaning the caretaker's roof. During all those years that we were there, we made sure that there was never much snow accumulation on the roofs. However, after we left in 1944, there was nobody moved any snow off the roofs and no roofs collapsed. This is myself getting water from the lake. This is how we, this was our running water system and carried it up the path to the house. In the back you see the wood, that wood supply. Our most common means of transportation during those years was snowshoes. Here we are back in the woods, uh, just walking on a trail through, through the woods. This is my brother Buck. Snowshoes are not much good for running. And we did use skis some, but it was really just for recreation, sliding down hills. We had no, uh, did not use them to, for crossing the lake. You couldn't pull a toboggan behind skis like you could with snowshoes. This was a trail that we made each year from the porch of the big house in the background down onto the lake. We got a lot of enjoyment out of it over the years. Here Buck and I are walking back in the woods. We had a little trouble starting the Model A that morning, so we built a fire under it just as a way of encouragement. That was not uh, a dangerous thing. Everybody did it at that time. This is the Model A that I learned to drive in. You could learn to drive in different stages. You could learn by skiing, and then you could, or by steering, and then you could learn to clutch and shift. It all didn't all have to come at once. In the summer, we had piled wood along the shore from woodcutting expeditions with the guests at Dahlberg's, and then we would go in the spring or in the winter and cut it with the saws. We had no chainsaws, of course, at that time. It was all hand, done with sweet saws. And carry it down to the lake, onto the truck, and then haul it home. Traveling had been good that spring, so we had the town car home as well as the lake car. That Model A Ford would take quite a load. Here it is with uh, down on its axles with a uh, with the um, load of wood, but it just kept going. We probably didn't put a thousand miles a year on on the car. Tires would wear out, but only because they would rot. They would never tread with their good worn. We cut that wood that year with a, with a saw rig that we had borrowed and had the neighbor who was throwing the wood was a caretaker at the next island. That saw rig would drive OSHA crazy today with that exposed blade and the exposed flywheel and pulleys. It was a single cylinder gasoline powered engine on it. Here is snowshoeing through new snow on the lake. That was a fairly normal amount to sink down with snowshoes. This is how we hauled our supplies with on toboggan. We always had to go back into the woods at some time during the winter and cut some wood to fill out the supply that we got from the from the lake shore. We'd find dead trees and cut them and bring them home for the caretaker's house here. Here is a, another means of transportation. We called it a snowmobile at the time, but now they 
generally referred to it as a wind sled, and it had a Model A engine on up on that uh, back and that frame, and you always got it started and made sure that it was going to go before you put water in the radiator. The radiator leaked enough that you would never use antifreeze; it wouldn't keep it. It was a pretty good outfit to get around in, especially when the snow was too deep to for automobile travel. And it did beat uh, snowshoes for m much of the time. We used it mostly just to get back and forth to a landing about a mile and a half away. But uh, occasionally we would use it for more productive reasons, like you'll see here in a bit where they're hauling wood on top of it, paneling to remodel the living room at the caretaker's house. There you can see the boards all stacked up on top of the roof of the much easier than on a toboggan. This is a problem for any travel on the lake. That is the problem of slush. This is water that has come up through the ice mixed with the snow and is almost impossible to tra travel through. This is another wind sled that my brother had made. With a, it had a motorcycle engine for the power. It was light enough that one person could move it pretty easily. It didn't steer with a wheel. He had a tiller for steering. This is snowshoes caught in that same kind of slush. It would freeze on the on the snowshoes, ball up under the feet. It was really a mess. This is a deeper deeper snow that we have on the lake. Yeah, you know, this was crossing the portage into the Kettle Falls Hotel. Carl Harrison and my father had walked up there one winter about 35 miles from each way. Here's my father taking his turn at breaking, breaking trail. And if you can read lips you'll see what he really thought about that process. Carl gave up on the snowshoes, decided that we're just as well by just plowing through it on foot. Another means of transportation was dog sleds. We never had one. This was a neighbor on the mainland who came over to give my sister Sally a ride. There were trappers, though, that used them all the time for riding the trap lines and doing what they needed. They ate a lot of meat, those dogs did. This is my mother getting, I believe it was her first ride in a ski, ski plane on the lake. Again, we didn't have a plane, but neighbors, friends and neighbors would stop by. I like this pilot's foot action. Now, my brother had put a cabin on his uh, snowmobile, and now he's getting ready to go out and give it a try. He still has all of his fingers. He, where there wasn't much snow, like at this time, a lot of glare ice, they were very tricky because they would just, any amount of power would make them go too fast, and watch this one fishtail. One of our neighbors put plows on his truck, thought he could go through the snow. It didn't really work very well. Here's a Model A back in service, and one of its other major activities was cutting and pulling up ice. This was a what we called an ice plow, and it cut grooves in the ice about eight inches deep that allowed you to split a long line of 
ice out and then not have to do to saw every piece. My mother was a driver and almost every time that we were doing the ice jobs. The more weight you could put on the plow, the faster it would cut down in. This was an unusual job in that we cut the ice over at the neighbor's point and hauled the cakes of ice over to to our ice house. That's myself in the front and my mother driving the car. As I said, we, we hauled the ice cakes across the lake this time, which was very unusual, but it was the only way we could manage that year with the ice conditions. We put those cakes up on the sled and then tow it over. It was only a couple hundred yards. And then we put them back into the water, into a channel, so that they would be lined up and easily to pull up onto the slide. Those cakes of ice on this job although we normally liked about 18 inches of ice, these were about 30 inches and they weighed about a thousand pounds a block. And then we had slide system set up with a rope and pulley to pull the slides, pull the ice up into the ice house. Then somebody would have to run the, the uh, rope down back down to get the next, get the next cake. And then sawdust had to be chopped. That was all frozen sawdust. Had to be chopped loose and put on top of the ice and around the sides to keep it from melting during the season, during the summer. This was a more normal way of cutting ice. We used the hand-operated ice saws that would cut through and make the cakes the size that you wanted. And then run them on up the slide. In the spring, we would get a delivery of gasoline from the mainland. The truck came across the ice and would fill all the barrels that we had. At that time, there were no pumps on the truck. They would only uh, empty by gravity feed and so the buckets had to be filled at the level of the ice and then handed up. Here the Model A is serving as a platform to hold the ladder for painting the trim on the boathouse. That sawdust and chips and bark that came off the trees when we were, the logs when we were cutting the firewood uh, insulated a section of ice so when the lake opened that was a raft for a while. Here and uh, my sister, my brother, and myself, my brother had only had his good school shoes with him so he went barefoot so he wouldn't move in the shoes. He was only about a mile and a half through that icy water. And then in the spring, as the ice is really softening up, you could paddle through it with a canoe. The 
the lake opened and sections and here is looking over to the neighbor's island.